Hey, you're all invited to Bob's Beachfront Hotel for one week, as soon as he tells us where it is. Uh, well, it's an honor. It's an honor to be speaking to the most exclusive group in Santa Fe, the Friends of the Lansing. That's what you are. Congratulations. You know how fortunate it is to be recognized as a friend of the Lensic? I tried for two years to be a friend of the Lensic. The best they would give me was acquaintance of the Lensic. That means I could hang around the lobby, but that was it. Anyhow, um, I really envy you guys. Look at the, look at the wonderful uh, benefits you get. Two tickets to any Lensic Presents performance is one of your goodies. No service charge for tickets purchased in the lobby. An invite to Lensic's annual holiday party. And today, with Bob's permission, I'm adding a special bonus for you all. As a friend of the Lensic, you will now be able to sit in on every city council meeting that has to do with zoning. <laughs> That's what you get. Okay, it's game time. Can we put up the first slide, please? Now, take a look at the list of those songs. They're all classics, all great. And without yelling it out, I, wanted, I want you to tell me if those were written by Rogers and Hart, Cole Porter, or Irving Berlin. Who thinks Rogers and Hart? Raise your hands. Who thinks Cole Porter? Raise your hands. Who thinks, Who thinks Irving Berlin? Raise your hands. Ah, Irving Berlin. They were all written by Julie Stein. <laughs> and Julie Stein is the composer of the music for the movie you're going to see, Funny Girl. Let me tell you a little bit about Julie. Julie Stein was born in London in 1905. He was a son of Jewish immigrants from the Ukraine who ran a small grocery store. At the age of eight, he moved with his family to Chicago, where he began taking piano lessons. And he proved to be a prodigy. At eight, he was playing the piano. At 10, he was playing with the symphony orchestras of St. Louis and Detroit. And what I'm trying to understand is, at eight, he took piano lessons at 10, He's playing with symphony orchestras. I mean, that's a prodigy. But he did not continue in the classical vein because to be a grandmaster concert pianist, his fingers were too small. I had the same problem, that's why I'm not playing for you. <laughs> Thank you, David. <laughs> Uh, so Julie developed a feel for popular music and began working with the jazz bands of 1920s Chicago. He then went out to Hollywood and was a vocal coach for Shirley Temple and Alice Bay. Then he started to write songs and he never stopped. He had over 1,500 published songs. Now Julie wrote the music. Some of his lyric partners were Sammy Kahn, Betty Comden and Adolph Green, Stephen Sondheim, Bob Merrill, E.Y. Harburg, he and Sammy Kahn were prolific writers for the movies. They had more top 10 hits than anyone. But now I want you to get a sense of Julie. He was outspoken, funny. Here he is talking about some of the songs that did not make the Academy Award, did not win the Academy Award. And so let's, let's roll that clip well, and get a sense. I tried writing Academy songs for eight times, I lost eight times. And now you're gonna hear a rare treat I'm going to play you a medley of my Academy Award losers. <laughs> First song I wrote that was eligible for Academy Award was with Frank Lesser. Big Harry James record, and everybody said you have a chance to win it. And it went something like, uh, I don't want to walk without you. What? It lost. Someone saw it. Save it. And then we got Doris Day in the movie. And uh, we wrote her a big kind of a ballad and went by you. It's magic. It's tragic, that lost two, and so we have two in a row. And then we got a Harry James record, 
and a kind of a jump tune at a time, and we thought, well, this might get it. It seems to me I heard that song before. It lost. Then I got to, to write a song for Sinatra in a movie. Time after time, I tell myself that I want to keep losing these feathers. And finally, uh, it was, I walk alone. Because to tell you the truth, I'll be lonely. David, I'll tell you when. And then we got another ballad for Sinatra. My heart should be well schooled, cause I've been fooled in the past, and yet I fall in love too easily. I fall in love and it lost. <laughs> Finally, this one year, I wasn't supposed to win, although Sinatra said you will when we had a bet, and I did win, and here's the song I won with. Thank you very much. I, I shot that whole thing. Uh, how do you like Carol Channing suddenly showing up? Three coins in the fountain. Well, I'll tell you why she showed up. Because in 1949, Julie decided to take a crack at Broadway. He teamed up with Leo Robin and came out with Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, which for the next 50 years gave Carol Channing somewhere to go every night. Julie was hooked. For the rest of his life, he devoted his town to Broadway, not only composing, but producing musicals as well. And was he ever successful? Some of the most enduring musicals had Julie Stein associated with them. High Button Shoes, Bells Are Ringing, Peter Pan, Gypsy, and of course, Funny Girl. An interesting story about Funny Girl is Barbra Streisand was not the first choice of the director and the producers. It was Anne Bancroft, can you believe that? <laughs> Anne Bancroft, well of course working with Julie, they figured it out that the range of songs would be too much for her. In the meantime, Julie heard about this relatively unknown singer in the, the Greenwich Village, and he went down to see her, and it was Barbara, and he went 28 straight nights, and then he convinced the director and the other producers to put Barbara Streisand in the lead role. Talk to yourselves for a minute. Oh, people who know Julie are the lucky. Oh, God, I can't sing when I'm not being paid. I did want to be here tonight, even though I couldn't be with you in person. Just to say that you've always been a wonderful friend to me and a wonderful composer. And I wanted to say thank you. And I hope this night is very special to you, as you are very special to me. I love you, Julie. I think that was when he won the uh, Kennedy Awards honor. And uh, I don't know whatever happened to her, but uh, 
<laughs> he died, Julie, <clears throat> at 88. Oh. <clears throat> <laughs> of a heart attack in 1994. His reputation as one of the most successful Broadway composers and songwriters of the 20th century secured. Now I can't confirm this, but rumor has it that on his deathbed, Julie said, let me get this quote, I've had a wonderful life. My one regret is I always wanted to be a friend of the Lenses. <laughs> but the best I could get was acquaintance. <laughs> Thank you very much.